All right, and hello everyone. Welcome to the live stream. I'm actually gonna dumb this down just a little bit more. There we go. Just about that much. That should be fine. Um, so today we are reacting live to the Indie World Showcase that's going on today. Um, I started about five, ten minutes before the uh, sh the actual thing starts. So for those who just want to see my reaction, you can go ahead and skip ahead um, to when it starts. <laughs> It better be good games this time. Yeah. You know, everyone's hyping up Silk Song in the uh, chat, I've noticed. Um, and while I would like to see that, I, uh, I'm i unsure if we actually will. <laughs> a lot of people are clowning them, as well as you can see the clown emoji being spammed a, a lot. Because <laughs> they're <really> like, hey, <laughs> do you think they're getting Silk Song? <laughs> Which, I mean, they could. We could find Silk Song here today. And if it does, and if we do, then there's even more of a reason to play Hollow Knight, then, right? <laughs> uh, today we got more Mountain Dew uh, Gingerbread Edition. <laughs> We're the real fucking clowns for watching this. <laughs> you know. You have a good point there, Pansy. We're we're the clowns thinking that we're we're expecting something big out of this when it might just be it's from my from my seat, yeah it says it says it's gonna be about twenty minutes worth of uh stuff. So we'll have to see how much uh like how much they actually show. But like it, it could just be twenty minutes of just like very much like B rated games. Like we could there, we could see, like, hardly anything here, probably. But usually they show off at least, like, one good thing in some of these showcases. And usually save those for the end. <laughs> one thing for sure, though, we're definitely not going to see, like, any good, like, first-party games, I would say. Unless they are made by indie people. Like how, you know, uh, how I had Candace of Hyrule before. <laughs> that was a Zelda property, but it was still an uh, indie game. <laughs> We might get stuff like that, but we're definitely not going to find any, like, you know, 
We're not gonna find anything for like Smash Brothers or something like that. <laughs> Silk Song is Smash. I just saw that scroll by. <laughs> Also, yeah, I'm just gonna keep the music going until the uh, either the countdown starts or the uh, the show starts, and I'll just close the the browser window up there. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not really expecting too much from this one. I kind of just do these reactions because it's kind of become a tradition at this point. Anything Nintendo related comes out, I react to it. It's like a cause and effect kind of relationship. And also, I am a man who owns a Switch, so I'm allowed to be excited for these. <laughs> By the way, Corey, uh, did you even buy any of the indie games that were part of the previous indie announcement? Um, I think there might have been a few of them that I did pick up. Some of them I at least probably have on my wish list. Um... I know a lot of the ones that I remember seeing, I just didn't, I wasn't really like too, too impressed by some of them, so I didn't really bother with most of them. But I think some of them I was kind of like curious about. I don't even remember, honestly, if you ask me about the last indie showcase, I can't even really tell you what was in the last one. <laughs> like, I'm really trying to like wrap my head around what I saw, and I don't remember anything. <laughs> I'm curious, though, actually. I know I have a dock for all my games that I usually kind of keep tabs on. And maybe I add some of these to them. Oh yeah, Chocobo GP I'm still kind of looking forward to. That's not coming out until next year, though. And I'm looking at my list. A lot of the games that are on my, like, hype list or like from some of the other places now. So hopefully this one will be able to add a couple more. <laughs> no one really cares about indie games in general. We say we do, but we low-key just prefer the big developers. I mean, I like indie games. You guys, you guys definitely know I like indie games because I've played a good amount and tried out a good amount on this channel. And also there's a lot of really good indie games out there. The only thing is most of them I don't find on the Switch. Like. Here's the, here's the other thing, too, about these announcements. Most of the Indie World stuff, I don't even look for them on the Switch. I look for them on Steam, because Steam is a very good place to find uh, good Indie games as well. Um, Switch, you can take some of the stuff on the go, but, like, I mostly use my Switch for my first-party titles, for sure. While Steam, I kind of have, like, my giant backlog of Indie games that I can play at any point. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, a lot of times I just look them up on Steam and see if they either already are already out on the uh, system, which they most likely are, or if they're also kind of coming out somewhere around the same time as well. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like a good amount. Because, like, some of my favorite games are indie games. Like, I love Enter the Gungeon a lot. It's, like, one of my favorite indie games I've ever played. Um... I also really liked One Step From Eden that I played before. Like a lot, of, I like a lot of the roguelike indie games they make out there. Um, some of the other ones I've been curious to check out, like um, like I've been, I've been curious to play more of Hollow Knight, honestly. Mm -hmm. And um, I also wanted to try out Shovel Knight as well at some point because I've heard very many good things about that. <laughs> Chess going crazy now. <laughs> Steam is better than Switch because it has achievements. That's very true. <laughs> it do have achievements though. I'm still I'm still very surprised that like that's the only Switch is the only console to never really catch up on that feature. I'm surprised I'm very surprised by that. 
Like, I'm, I'm waiting for that to kind of come up in one of the next, like, uh, actual, like, Nintendo Directs. That they add, like, an achievement kind of feature for a lot of their games. Because honestly, it, it, that's like a big driving part for some of the, the games. Alright, it's starting now. Let me know how all audio is, by the way, too. Because, um... It might be a little bit loud, I think about it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put down the half. Hello, and welcome to Indie World. I'm Amber. And I'm Paul. We're back to show you some indie games coming to the Nintendo Switch system. Let's dive right in! Nintendo's run by a bunch of boomers. I can believe it. Out from the craze of the messenger. This is another game I've been wanting to try to check out at some point too. I have it on my on my Steam as well. Oh, this is uh this is very um Chrono Trigger esque. Yeah, I like the style a lot. Yeah, it looks kind of like an indie Chrono Trigger. Sea of Stars. That's nice. I might look into that. I do like uh, little Fans RPGs like that too. RPGs with modernized elements will want to check out Sea of Stars. It tells the story of two children of the solstice, a lunar monk and a solar blade dancer. Yeah, let me know if you need to turn up, Fancy. The powers of the sun and the moon to perform eclipse magic, the only thing that can fend off monsters created by an evil alchemist known as the Fleshmancer. The Fleshmancer. Oh boy. Stunning dynamic lighting. A world where you can traverse freely and explore every nook and cranny. And it does look very beautiful. Not to mention the incredibly moving story with plenty of Like, I, I like a lot of games that look like it's these, the where it's pixel art, but they still have dynamic lighting to make worry, it look very pretty. You don't need to have played the messenger to fully enjoy this gorgeous game. And oh, this takes place in the same world as the messenger? The was composed by none other than the renowned Yasunori Mitsuda. Who composed music nice. for Chrono Trigger, Chrono oh. Cross, well, there you and go. Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Well, there you go. <laughs> wow. Launches on Nintendo Switch holiday, holiday of next year. Wow. Okay, then. This looks interesting. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> That's cute. We Alicia or Alicia. Hi,我是Nate。我们是Underscore Bye. <laughs> There's plenty to admire in this puzzle adventure game. For twin sisters Aisha and Leisha, cooperation is key in safely navigating this deserted temple. Hmm. The game makes creative use ah. of the various input options available on Nintendo Switch. Each sister is controlled differently, and you can control both via solo or local co-op play. Okay, so it's with solo Leisha, or local. You'll use nice. Motion controls with Joy-Con controllers in TV mode. And with Leisha, you'll use touch controls to guide the helper robot Ambu in handheld mode. Hmm. However you choose to play, you'll need the sisters to work okay, together then. by exchanging clues and operating devices that can help you go deeper inside the temple. Yeah, so it's like a We Were Here kind of but thing, be careful. but a little bit bigger. It's filled with all sorts of menacing monsters and treacherous traps, some of which can trigger different endings. Ooh, the heartfelt, multiple endings as well. When playing with a friend, coupled with the emotional story will complement your journey to uncover the secrets residing within 
Alicia, the oblivion of twin goddesses, launches as a If I have a friend that would be interested in that, I would get it, but I'm not sure. This one looks cool, not gonna lie. Yeah. Hi, if I had someone to play with, with I would probably would. We're two brothers who started our own indie studio in order to make a classic point and click adventure game. Today, we're excited to announce our debut title, Locomotive. Set aboard a 1930s express train, you find yourself caught in the middle of a deadly mystery full of twists, turns, and larger than life characters. Solve satisfying puzzles and clear your name once and for all. We both grew up playing mm -hmm. point and click adventure games, and it's been a long term ambition for us to put our own spin on it. We can't wait for you to play Locomotive when it comes to the Nintendo Switch system. Welcome aboard the Royce Express, where my guests indulge in luxury travel, fine dining, Ooh, and... The pixel art again. Murder! Who's at hand to catch... Murder! There's my trusty lawyer, a would-be detective, and Her Majesty's Secret Service. There's just one problem. They're the suspects. With puzzles to solve, palms to grease, and clues to uncover. They'd better prove their innocence fast, or it's the end of the line in an adventure that's not just nuts. Yikes. It's <laughs> locomotive. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Ooh, so it's like a whodunit kind of thing. Love me a good murder mystery. Then you'll love locomotive. A single player point a fish game as well, too. Adventure. Climb aboard I can definitely see it with the art style. And investigate the suspicious death of Lady Unterwald. You'll play as a straight-laced lawyer, an amateur detective, and an undercover agent at different points in the story. Along the way, you'll meet a fully voiced cast of quirky characters and solve head-scratching puzzles to prove your innocence. Figure out who done it and what locomotive inspired them to murder in the first place. Locomotive steamrolls onto Nintendo Switch. All right then. Summer 2022. This game's the best one so far. Yeah. <laughs> Mama, wake up! It's almost 1 p.m. You sleepyhead. We like the art style of this one. Oh, it's a rhythm game too. Ooh. Oh, this reminds me of, like, Battleship Brigade, at least in terms of that's 2D style right there. I miss you, dude. Music. But Friendship. You live your life. Love again. After Love EP. Okay. I do like me a good music, uh, On musical game. On behalf of the Pixel team from Indonesia, I'm proud to announce our upcoming game, Afterlove EP. Afterlove EP is a modern day story of music, loss, acceptance, loving others, as well as yourself. While the game is heavily inspired by the aesthetic and storytelling format of the Japanese manga, the game itself is set in Jakarta. We want players to experience this vibrant place we call home, which is also considered as the melting pot of the multicultural people of Indonesia. Hmm. We cannot wait to let you experience our unique narrative adventure and explore our interpretation of Jakarta. Hmm. From the creative director so an Indonesian spin on a Japanese manga? ...comes a stirring narrative about love, loss, and lyricism. Set in Jakarta, Indonesia, After Love EP focuses on young musician Rama, who struggles to compose music after his girlfriend Cinta passes away. By communicating with Cinta's voice inside his head, Rama will learn how to cope with grief, forge new relationships, and even potentially love again. It looks really cute, a honestly. A visual novel, rhythm game, and narrative adventure, After Love EP challenges So basically all the things I like. Music <laughs> fill a promise made to Cinta. There are multiple endings based on the choices you make, as well oh, as it's a choice-based game too. From Indonesian band Alfalfa, in striking art direction from Soyatu. Start anew in After Love EP, launching on Nintendo Switch. Y'all look into that for sure. Kirk now flexes rhythm game skills and stream now. Yeah, can I though? Because I'm not sure if those are some of those songs would be copyrighted or not. Oh, I can already tell this is a roguelike. Mm. I'm cooking. <laughs> that pot. <laughs> 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 
Blade Grass Sword. Ooh. Okay, yeah, this is definitely my jam right here. Wait, is this... Oh, is this like a food-based roguelike? You, like, cook things together to make more stuff? Dungeon Munchies. Ooh. Okay, I'm curious about that. Mm, I'm hungry. I've got the munchies. Dungeon munchies. Look at that guy. Then this 2D side-scrolling action platformer should definitely satisfy your craving. You are dead. Well, you were You are dead. dead. And now you've been revived in a mysterious underground facility. But forget hanging around here. You've got to get out. With the help of the undead necro chef Simmer, you'll necro hunt chef. monsters, then cook and eat them. They're around Cook them and eat them. Oh, nice. Various abilities. One dish, for example, might give you the power to serve up new combos. Hmm. So you are what you eat. Literally. Yeah, literally. This game is a great place to get locally sourced and farm fresh monsters. So mix and match to get the right meal for your playstyle. And let's not forget the eclectic cast of characters, Just cut off his head. story, and charming 2D pixel art. Better Indeed. bring a voracious appetite when Dungeon Munchies devours its way onto the Nintendo Switch system. Yeah. Later, later today. today. Okay, I'll look into that for sure then. <laughs> Hi, Mia. I am Nils. I am a player instructor and lyd designer for Bedtime Games. I have played spillet music for 10 years. Our coming spill, Figment 2, is filled with lots of musical boss fights and other lydlæggerier. For to get the most punchy lyd, I have been out of my trasvær and smed on havegriller and kaffekanner. Musikken i Figment indordner sig efter dig. Vi har brugt rigtig meget energi på at få lyd, musik og gameplay til at spille sammen. Okay. Vi glæder os rigtig meget til at vise jer spillet. I'm coming back to the surface. Hmm. I need time to make things right. So hold on and soon comes the day. And there are sights you might. Ah, interesting style. We're already on to the next segment. Yep, this is a figment of your imagination. Oh, very funny. Oh, very this funny. <laughs> adventure game. You'll make your way through a rhythmic world set in the human. Figment mind. looks familiar to me. I can't remember if I have it or yet or not. Are spreading chaos everywhere. It's up to you to put an end to their fearsome schemes. I'll look into that. Play solo or locally with a friend as you wield your trusty sword in engaging combat. Manipulate environments to solve compelling puzzles and have symphonic showdowns against some musically menacing bosses. That sounds like trouble. This is the, uh, this is the rhythm game um, indie uh, world showcase. Figment 2 Creed Valley begins its symphony on Nintendo Switch <laughs> February 2022. A free demo will be available later today on Nintendo eShop. Cool. Deep sea diving? Check. Invest. Oh god, a board game. Check. Uh, oh, it's a board game simulator. Check. Surviving on the moon? Check that too. A slew of board games from developer Oink Games are coming to Nintendo Switch. Let's play Oink Go Games. On thrilling and risky treasure hunts in deep sea adventure. Like the little Meepas. Become the biggest investor in startups. Catch the sketchy rogue and don't get caught in. A fake artist goes to New York and recover supplies with your fellow astronauts to survive in. See, I, I really like the idea the games of are designed to be easy board to games turning into video games the like this their original tabletop versions you can play all the games but you can do a lot of these in tabletop online. simulator so probably with friends near and far get together and play on one system or create a room with friends more games will also be added in the future start a game night with let's play Oink that's games. nice though Launching like if you're interested in those games it wouldn't be that bad Nintendo switch and it's coming today. out today Hi, I'm Javier. Exactly, CEO that's what I was saying too. Here with the studios. Hi, I'm Iris. I'm working as an environment artist for our upcoming title, Endling Extinction is Forever. We wanted to create a game that raises awareness about how the world may be in the near future if we don't change our consumption habits. The environment is mainly presented during night since we want to emphasize a fox's natural behavior and contrast a calm but deteriorating world and human threats during the day. We hope that Endling may encourage everyone to reflect, but also that players around the world can enjoy 
its story, gameplay, and cuteness. Okay. Ah, oh, he's very cute though. Look at that. <laughs> you are fucks. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Protect the baby. I love the art style of this. Endling Extinction is Forever. As the last mother fox in Endling Extinction is Forever, you'll need to keep your three cubs alive and lead them to safety. Ah, so we're a mother. In a world ravaged by humanity. In this Damn, game, humans are the worst, stuff, right? Survival and adventure, you'll make your way through devastated environments to reach the one place on Earth where humans can't hurt you. Along the way, You'll hunt other animals to feed your cubs, as well as teach them new skills to make them less vulnerable to predators. This looks really cute. I really hope they make it. I do too. I would definitely play this. <laughs> how many of your cubs survive the perilous journey is up to you. Endling Extinction is Forever launches on Nintendo Switch. Now humans are the best. It has uwus. Yes, indeed. Here's more info about the skateboarding action platformer Ali Ali World from our friends at Roll7 and Private Division. All oh, right, yeah, they came out with a skateboarding game uh, recently too, huh? I think I remember being curious about this game too. Join your crew and travel across our beautiful land. Yeah, I remember seeing this before. This game still is really cool. new paths through the desert. Or cross moving platforms in picturesque sketch side. You'll see it looks really cool. Stuff along the way. But don't worry, that's just part of your journey to Narvana. There you'll compete with champions, challenging each other's skills to win rewards, and create new routes to share with your friends. So come shred by the sea. Chase a <laughs> bee. So there is like a low level editor Get kind of. Down to Radlandia and achieve Narvana. Yeah, I'm still very interested Bonus in that. Items. Oh, nice. Get me oh, nice. Ali Ali World rolls onto Nintendo Switch February 8th, 2022. Not Pre-orders begin later today on Nintendo eShop. Cool. Hi, I'm Dan Arutis, director hey, of Rivercity Girls off. 2. And I'm you don't like Colleen skateboardy Bay, games? Producer of River City Girls 2. Oh, way forward. I've been a River City fan since the days of the Nintendo Entertainment System. And in fact, this is the third River City game I've worked on. So I'm thrilled to bring you an all-new adventure starring Misako, Kyoko, Kunio, and Ricky. We were blown away by the response to the first River City Girls. So, for the sequel, we're including everything players loved about the original, plus a whole lot more, including online co-op. I really did like River City Girls, too. this game into your hands as soon as possible. In the meantime, please enjoy our debut trailer for River City Girls 2. Okay, so I, I didn't even know they were coming out with a sequel to this game. Six playable characters. Ooh, so instead of the two now you got six? That's cool. What? Two-player co-op, local online. All right, cool. Cool to see that they're still implementing that. New moves and techniques. Bone crunching action. Okay. I'm curious about it. More baddies to take down. Let's go. Right there. Yeah, some of them look pretty cool. Some of the new characters look pretty cool. Sequel to the acclaimed beat 'em up, River City Girls. There's trouble brewing once again in River City with higher stakes, meaner streets, and even more over-the-top humor. Take control mm -hmm. of one of six characters, including returning powerhouses Kiyoko and Misako. Each character has their own fighting style and upgradable movesets, which you'll need as you set off on a new quest, picking up where the first game left off. And okay, when then. we say new, we mean it. New moves, enemies, areas, items, and a new soundtrack by the first game's composer, Megan McDonald. Ooh. Ooh, I like the now way that person plays, too. Paths, as well as a return of a familiar foe. 
Get the fist flying solo or team up with a friend locally or online. What do you say, Paul? Ready to give some goons the old one, two? Oh, heck yeah. Never even heard the first one. It's a, uh, I think it was kickstarted the first one, but it's a pretty good beat em up. It's like a really good beat em up, actually. several more indie games coming to Nintendo Switch. From painting the world to a management sim with dinosaurs. Enjoy! I played the first one with Chris for a little bit, and then we kind of stopped after a while, but it was still very fun. Parkosaurus. Oh boy. Oh, so it's like, yeah, Jurassic Park meets uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon. I like that. Oh. Okay then. Don't starve together. Okay then. I feel like that would be better to get for Steam, but still. Interesting. Colorful tail. Oh, this looks cute. You got some trash! <laughs> I like that, okay. Baby Storm. The hell is this? Oh, is this a tower defense? Interesting. Grime, ooh. Oh, this has some interesting style. Looks like a Metrovania, too. Okay. Flame and Winter. Look at that walk animation. <laughs> Choice based game? Okay. Timeline. I was like, this is like a puzzle game. Okay then. Yeah, like a time bending kind of game. Interesting style. Behind the frame, the fine scenery. Oh god, it's just just seeing the curse going across, I'm just like, why would you put this to switch? This definitely looks like more of a uh, computer game. That's all for today's indie world. Was oh, that it? We've got one more game. We have one Check more, of course. All right, they're gonna come out with Soul Song. Watch. <laughs> Just watch. <laughs> Why well, don't start together here? That game success. <laughs> yeah. So it's better for a uh, computer, I would say, though, because it's more online based. And you can only play it online, basically, as far as I know. I like the art style for this one, though. This is nice. I like the hand drawn look. Amori. Okay. The critically acclaimed RPG Omori is making its way onto Nintendo Switch. Oh. Travel back and forth between two strange and vibrant worlds, each one brimming with colorful friends and foes. To I really like the art style. Past. You'll experience an unconventional story and turn-based battle system, supplemented by warm illustrations by renowned artist this... Omocat. Why does this Who almost look like Earthbound in a way? Wrote directed and coded much the game amori hmm. does lean into some heavy topics so be prepared it's mm -hmm. quite the journey okay Omori then launches on nintendo switch spring 2022 curious okay that's interesting and that's all for today's indie world okay we hope you enjoyed the lineup of games in today's showcase as always we'd like i saw people in the chat spamming amori before so i guess that a lot of people were expecting that maybe don't forget to follow our official Twitter account to stay up to date on all the latest news from Indie World. Until next time, happy, happy gaming. gaming! Happy gaming. Alright, that's interesting. No Smash? Were you really expecting Smash at this, uh, <laughs> at this presentation? No Silk Song? Yeah, all those people are definitely uh, mad too. <laughs> Oh my god, Silk Song announced. Yeah, just 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 keep trolling with that. Just be like, yeah, Silk Song, let's go. <laughs> uh But yeah, that was some there's some pretty cool stuff that came out from that, I would say. I'm definitely curious about a lot of the games that are on um that. Actually, hold on. We're gonna we're gonna go back and just like do a little bit of a deep dive. Just so I could talk about some of these games. Um 
Can I actually just kind of go through here? Like this? Okay, yeah, there, there, there's where it starts. Okay. Where the fuck is Smash? Zero out of ten. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Actually, if I if I refresh this, will will it be uploaded? Or is it no? It's still it's still streaming. Okay. Um. Yeah, let's let's quickly go back through here and just talk about some of these games. The Nintendo Switch system. Let's dive right in. All right, so this game looked pretty cool. Um, I'm just gonna mute it so I can kind of like talk over it a little bit. Actually, I'll uh, I'll put I'll put it like a little bit on here. So, yeah, this game looks pretty cool. Apparently, it's linked to the messenger, which is curious to me. But I'll, I'll probably at least like put this on my list. I probably won't be looking at it for a while, especially when um, you have the release date that it does, which if you guys remember that is um. Holiday of 2022. So you guys aren't even gonna expect that. It's next year. <laughs> you guys aren't gonna expect that anytime soon. <laughs> Corey, we already watched it. Please make, don't make us relive it. <laughs> but I, I, I kind of want to just like talk about some of these because some of them, some of them are very interesting. I also kind of want to give like little afterthoughts about everything. Um, this game looked pretty cool too. Um. It sounds like you're pretty curious about this one too, as well, Pansy. So, and because it's like a co-op kind of game, maybe it's something that we can both get and then play on stream or something. I still think it's not going to come out for a little while, though. It's not going to come out till spring of next year, so we'll see about that, though. Oh, just like, but there's no point anymore because it's hidden. <laughs> True. Probably that would be cool. <laughs> um, and then there's this one. This one I'm like indifferent about because like the the, the art style and everything looks kind of cool to it, but like I'm not personally too high for locomotive. I might skip. I might end up skipping that one. This one looks really cute though. After after love EP looks really nice. Um, I'm unsure. If I can play it on stream, though, I have to see if some of their music is copyrighted or not. But if not, I would definitely love to play it on stream because this is just a cute little game. It, it it it's very cutely done, and it has like you know it has the multiple endings and everything too. So I would like to like give my like first reactions to it out there as well too. That's only depending though, yeah, if we can't do that. But Summer 2022 is not too bad either. <laughs> Risk it. <laughs> See, I don't know about risking it. <laughs> Either way, it's not even coming out till next summer. So, we have some time before we can debate about that. But I'm definitely going to be putting that on my list. This game looks really cool. Dungeon Munchies. I know it's supposed to... I think it's... Yeah, it's supposed to come out later today on the uh, on this system. But I'm going to be... I'm curious to see if it's actually on Steam as well. Actually, let me let me let me check that real quickly. All right, hold on. Are you going to be able to see my typing? Yeah, okay, you will. There we go. I'm trying to be a little bit more uh proactive about this kind of thing cuz I don't want people seeing me type in my password and leak it in online and everything, you know. <laughs> There we go. Alright, so go into the store. Dungeon Munchies. It is on Steam as well. <laughs> we'll have you guys know that. Um, it's an early access game. You can purchase it right now, obviously. Because it's also going to be on the system too. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna add this to my wish list. It's currently full price now, but even even then, it's still like fifteen dollars, so it's not that bad. 
I'll look into that though for sure. Again, no, this is like what I do with these uh, with these directs. I'm a I'm actually j just for the sake of you guys too. I am going to um, just kind of look up some of these games and see if they are out on uh, on Steam or not, and or when it when or not they come out. Oh, whoops! I just accidentally opened up <laughs> Photoshop. <laughs> no, go back. Stop. Um, sea of Stars, yeah, it is also planned to release on Steam as well, with a release date of 2022. Okay, so I'll add that to the wish list as well to kind of keep track of it. Photoshop, stop, close, please. <laughs> I don't want to. You should do some art today. I I I have I thought about getting a collab on some art today if I have the time to. See so yeah, a holiday 2022 apparently they might they might come up around the same time. This one I'm curious about too, because actually I was about to say like this this one sound like it was kind of made for the Switch, but I'm curious about this one as well. Alicia. Yeah, you you wouldn't find it on Steam. See, I'm pretty sure it's a Switch exclusive, which makes sense because they have like functionality controls that work for the Switch. So I don't see it releasing for any other platform. Innocence. See, we're gonna skip ahead this little part here. And yeah, after love EP. Um, After Love EP is not even on uh, Steam at the moment, so yeah, this one might also be a Switch exclusive, and or they just haven't made a Steam page for it yet. <laughs> no, Photoshop! <laughs> I told you to stop! Close. Just popped up in front of my face. Um, this game also looked really cool too. I think, yeah, I just looked this one up, the Dungeon Munchies game. That one really makes me curious. I might grab it when it's on sale. Because I'm probably not going to get to it for a little while anyways, so I may as well pick it up when it's cheaper. But that one does catch my eye quite a bit. Oh yeah, Figment as well too. Figment was kind of curious to me. Uh, mostly, Figment was mostly curious to me because I feel like I have it. Yeah, I have the first Figment in my library. But Figment 2 is also a thing coming out. Okay. And yes, it is on Steam as well. Set to release quarter 1 of 2022. Okay. We'll put it on there just in case. But yeah. It wants you to art today, right? I know. It's just like, please, hope in me again. Use me, master. <laughs> um, once again, these games, like, this is cool if you like these games, but, like, you could just do this on Tabletop Simulator. I, be I bet you could find all of these games on Tabletop Simulator. Endling look uh, pretty cool, too. This game looked very, very cute. Let me get the uh, the end card here. Okay. See, so yeah, spring of twenty twenty two. They say on here. Uh, let's see if it's on Steam as well. Yep, Endling Extinction is forever is on here. Um. Yep, also set to release twenty twenty two. They do have a demo out for it as well too. They can actually download right now. Also, something else came up when I searched up Endling in here. Oh, it's the demo, of course. Okay. 
But yeah, that game does definitely uh, make me curious. Knows me Senpai Adobe, probably. <laughs> Basically. Um, but yeah. Ollie Ollie World obviously really makes me curious, too. Um, I don't remember if this is Switch exclusive. I don't think it is. Yeah, they actually have a lot of the Ollie games now that I look at it on Steam. Because even have the original Ollie Ollie and then Ollie Ollie 2. But then Ollie Ollie World is the one that's uh, new that's coming out. Um, plan release date coming soon. Yeah. Which I'm also curious too. Um, so the first Ollie Ollie. This is actually a game that was developed a while ago. First Ollie Ollie came out 2014. And let's see. Oh, it looks way different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, the first game looked way, way different. Interesting. I was curious about that. Wall ride among the trees. Yeah, that's also coming on Switch, no, on on Steam. <laughs> but so, by the way, we've only found, I think, one game. Well, actually, two. We found like two games in this whole direct that aren't on uh aren't aren't, aren't on Steam. Oh yeah, and River City Girls 2 as well. I know this is going to be releasing on multiple platforms probably too. But when is it releasing on Switch? Summer 2022. Okay. How about on here? Okay. So River City Girls, they have the first game on Steam. By the way, this game was released um, two years ago. And yeah, it's like, it's like a little beat-em-up. I, I remember playing this with Chris before. I don't, ho I don't own it on Steam. I owned it on, um, I think, GOG, because we got it for free on that thing. Um, but it's pretty cool. I, I really like the beat-em-up game, so this one actually kind of cur is curious about me to me as well. I like the like the action fighting kind of games like these two. Um, and it seems like, at least for the moment, it is only on Switch, because I can't find it on Steam. Unless they might just be like holding on to it for a little while. Got... Oh, and then the B roll. Okay, so Parkosaurus. <laughs> See, I, I I normally I do kind of like some of these kind of games, but this one's a little. Kind of a little ant for me. Also, don't starve together. I already own it and see him. There's no point in me getting it. Chikori look actually kind of cool. This one's also available later today. Let me let me see. Chikori color. Yep, there it is. On Steam as well. Um, twenty dollars. Or you can get the bundle with the OST for thirty. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, this one made, was made me pretty curious. So I'll put this on my list as well. Baby Storm. I still don't quite understand what this is supposed to be. It looks like kind of like almost like a team like battle royale kind of thing. Or like it's almost like a tower defense, but you're trying to like do individual. I don't know. That one's weird to me. I'm unsure what to think about that one. Even if you don't have it, it's not worth getting. <laughs> eh. Don't start together can be fun with friends. It's just you just need to be able to grind through the survival aspects of it. Which I know you're probably not a fan of um, survival games, Pansy. So I can understand that. Grime. Like, Don't Starve is probably the only survival game I'm kind of like, I kind of like, alongside, you know, like games like Minecraft or Terraria. But a lot of the other games in the survival genre I'm not really too hyped for. 
Um, here's Grime. Yep. So, yep, sure enough. Um, also on Steam. Uh, this one, yeah, a Souls-like Metroidvania. Yeah, I could definitely see it with the uh, art style that they uh, put on here. Similar to games like Hollow Knight and Dark Souls 3. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Um... Yeah, I'll add this to my wishlist as well. This this game looked pretty cool to me. I've, I've been getting a little bit more into Metroidvanias ever since I tried out Hollow Knight and uh, Metroid Dread on uh, stream. So, these kind of games are kind of up my alley as well, too. It's a little creepy as well, too. I like the like aesthetic as well to it. The very dark atmosphere and everything. Yeah, that's, that's the main thing about survival games. They get very boring very quickly. Garuda, I'm not really. Eh. It's a don't nod game, which means it's it's pretty good story, but it doesn't really excite me too much just by looking at it. Timeline, I'm also kind of f eh for. Behind the frame, like I said, this is a computer game made for the Switch. <laughs> okay, and there we go. When are you going to play Dark Souls? Oh, I'd love to play Dark Souls on stream. <laughs> Eventually, when I uh, when I can get around to doing it. Speaking of, let me see if I have them again. Because I know I have some of them. But I know I don't have all the Dark Souls series. Yeah, I own Dark Souls 3 on my on my Steam. Um, I never got the first one or the second one. But I do at least have three. And I would definitely like to do a... Um, I'm not sure if I'll do a playthrough. I might do a playthrough. And base, and what I'm thinking about it with it is... Maybe I'll just see how far I can get before I decide to finally rage quit it. Because <laughs> I know it's a very hard and punishing game. And I'm not sure if I can bring myself to play all of it. But I would definitely like to show my uh, misery on stream. For sure. <laughs> And then, of course, Amori. Amori looks really cool, actually. Not gonna lie. Yeah, this reminds me a lot of, like, Earthbound and stuff like that. And I really like the art aesthetic as well, too, for it. And sure enough, it is on Steam as well. 20 bucks, by the way, which is not that bad for an indie game. Psychological horror. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Similar to Pony Island. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say Undertale, but this is fine too, I guess. <laughs> Story rich indie RPG. Yeah. Okay. I'll add this to the list as well, too. That might be a cool game to do on stream as well, too, because it seems like a very like, you know, one of those very deep games that you kind of experience a story throughout with. Um, okay. But yeah. Um, overall, thank you, uh, Nintendo Nintendo Indie World, for um, giving me more games to add to my Steam list. <laughs> this, this is, again, this is basically what I do um, each Indie World showcase. I just add more games to my Steam list and then maybe add a few of them to my, uh, to my Switch as well. But like I said, there, there, there's only like really two games on this whole thing that are kind of like actually pretty good for the Switch. And um, that's that uh that one co-op game that we saw before, um, Alicia. Uh, excuse me. And um, and also the one the the one rhythm game. Uh, whatever it was called. After Love EP, that's what it was. Yeah, After Love EP. And Alicia are probably the two games that you would get for Switch. Everything else you can just get on Steam. <laughs> oh, this is Pony Island and Undertale for you? Hmm. Maybe it's because I haven't played enough of Undertale um, on my on my uh, system for it to like register that it's a game that I'm interested in. <laughs> Funny how Nintendo helped Steam more than they have helped themselves. Yeah. Well, when you're a guy like me. And you have a Steam account where you play all your indie games at. You kind of can't help but do this with it. because With the indie showcases. Because, again, like a lot of these games are available on Steam. Some of them are even available earlier. 
like I said before, too. <laughs> and also, unlike the uh, this, well, actually, this 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 the Switch store does actually have a good amount of sales going on for them now. But I still feel like a lot of these games are just better to play on your computer, especially some of the uh, some of the ones that need you to point and click on things on the screen. Um, some of the others I can see was being a better with the controller though. And some of them would be nice to be playing on the go as well too. But I I, I like to play a lot of these like little games on my streams anyways, so I don't mind just adding them to my Steam list. Because I already have a giant list of games on my Steam uh to play for the streams, so why not just keep getting more, right? <laughs> But yeah, Nintendo was always selling me on the on the first party titles. When it comes to indie games, though, not many of them have really gotten to me. Like a lot of them that have gotten to me are the ones that kind of either combine with first party titles or work better with the Switch. Everything else is just play on my computer, though. Because normally I only really play those kind of video games at home anyway, so I don't really need to take them on the go. And I have so many first party Nintendo games that I can play on the go. Like fucking Metopia <laughs> or Pokemon, so why? Yes, like why would I want to play indie games on my Switch when I could just be playing Pokemon or uh, <laughs> or Metopia instead? <laughs> I guess that's kind of what I'm thinking in my mind. Like if I'm in the mood for like a good indie game, I usually just open up my Steam and then I just play one of those games. But if I want to play a Nintendo game, I pull up my Switch. <laughs> That's kind of my relationship with all of those, I would say. <laughs> um, but yeah, this has been my full reaction and analysis to the Indie World Showcase uh, for the for today's date. <laughs> uh, rip everyone who uh, wanted Silk Song. <laughs> and we're expecting anything more than that. Uh, but yeah, this this wasn't too bad, I would say. I, I, I did enjoy a lot of the games that they have on there. I, I put a lot of them on my list, so overall, not bad. There's a few games that were like, eh, but overall, it wasn't a bad presentation, I would say. Some of the games definitely do interest me, especially being a rhythm action gamer like I am. So yeah, overall, not bad. Good job, Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo, did you just stick to the Nintendo? Yeah. Again, though, yeah, like, because, like I said, it it'll, it mostly helped benefit my Steam library more than it did their uh, Switch stuff. But yeah, I'm definitely a lot more hyped with these Nintendo showcases when it's the Nintendo Directs instead of the indie showcases. But they still didn't come out with too many bad announcements. Like, if anything, I kind of use these to kind of see what indie games are out in the world so that I can maybe put them on my list and uh, see whenever I can get to them. But yeah, for now, um, I think that's going to end my reaction and uh, everything for this stream. Um, in about an hour, I'm going to be playing Tetris Effect Connect, Connected on the uh, stream. So if you guys see, see that, uh, please tune in. Um, like if, like this if you like this reaction. And um, subscribe and follow if you wish to see more reactions like this in the future for whatever I may do. <laughs> um... And yeah, um, details to this uh, showcase, as well as all my other blue reactions that I've done before, um, down in the description below. All right, thank you guys so much for uh, joining me on today's uh, stream. And I'll be seeing you guys later today for Tetris Effect. <laughs> bye bye now.